Um, but for today, we're going to pick up the uh, the pattern we're doing is the Blue Doctor. Mm -hmm. And here it is right here. And uh, it's in the more traditional feathering style. Yes. It is a reduced version of the classic feather wing. Yeah. So what, uh, what, uh, what, what, what's the, the main characteristics of the feather wing versus just the regular Blue Doctor, the, the okay. more traditional that you'd use? More? Okay, what we use here now are, are hair wings, and they were spawned right from these, these classic feather wing flaws. These were the first salmon flaws themselves. Yeah. And this particular version omits a lot of the expensive and hard to find materials, <laughs> and we just substitute other, other materials for them, right? I don't oh, know about you, Rob, but I mean, if, if I saw that in my fly case, I'd look at it and I'd go, that's too pretty to put on the hook and throw it in the water. And and anything's worse, anything's worse than salmon. Yeah, I suppose. But anyway, well, uh, just to let you know, we're, we're going to start this. Rob's already got part of the fly already tied, but here's a list of the dressing materials so that you could tie this fly from scratch at home. The hook is number four Bartleaf. The thread, white 3 monocord, red 6 monocord. The tag, extra fine oval silver tinsel and yellow floss. The tail is golden pheasant crest. The butt, red chenille. The ribs, oval silver tinsel. The body is blue floss. The throat, blue and dyed blue grizzly hackle. The underwing is golden pheasant tip tippet. The wing is scarlet, blue and yellow goose. Peacock wing with sides of barred wood duck, veiled with strips of bronze mallard with a topping over all, and the head is red. That's everything you need to tie the Blue Doctor. What I need to tie the Blue Doctor is him. <laughs> so, start tying. So okay. as we said, now you've already got the body, which is basically anybody who's a regular viewer okay, of the program. Let me go through it. I've got the tag, tail, body, or butt, body, rib, part of the underwing, well, actually, the only part of the underwing that we're going to put in, mm -hmm. and the, and a part of the, of the throat. So, all we have to do is uh, set in some married feathers uh, feathers for the wing and uh, bronze mallard, and we're going to substitute teal for the uh, wood duck, mm -hmm. and uh, a topping over all, and we're ready to roll. Okay. Well, up until this point, though, now this is just standard techniques that we've tied on numerous well. numerous flies yeah. throughout the seasons yeah. seasons plural. So anybody who's a regular viewer, um, you know, you've, you've seen these techniques before. Sure. So you tie it this far, and now you'll pick it up from here. So let's go. What okay, are we doing we're here? We're ready to roll now. All righty. We're going to marry some feathers. Okay. Now I have some feathers already married up. Now what'd you do that for? No, because of the time, time, uh, you know, we'd never be able to do two sets of wings and okay. or two wings, just a full set of wings or whatever. Let's show them the cereal here now. Let me see what so we So what I've got is a set of wings yep. and uh, that particular set of wings will fibers will sit on the near side towards us right okay now just just for for anyone who hasn't seen we, we did do this marion before but just mm -hmm. what exactly have you done you've taken three different wing material four four sorry oh yeah one two three four there you go and uh, you, you chose them so that you laid them beside each other and try and get them concave side going the same direction yes and the length is basically the same, Yes. and the dimensions are relatively the same, mm -hmm. and that they will work together as a nice pattern. That's right. And you've got to make two, two copies of this, one for each side of the one fly? One for each side of the fly. Okay. Now, let's go back down to these feathers over right here, and now you'll see you that I'll more. have okay. the outside of the feather, mm -hmm. meaning the concave side facing us, Okay. and the fibers from this side of the bird Mm -hmm. cannot marry with the fibers from this side and vice versa. Okay. They all have to come from the same side of the feather. So looking at the, the stem going right up the middle, the left side has to stay with the left side and the right side with the right side. Correct. Okay. Okay, now we, like I say, I've, I've done the left side already, so what I have to do is I have, I have to cut out a bunch of fibers. Mm -hmm. And I try to get them about the same length, but if you're one or two fibers out, not to worry from the same side. Mm -hmm. So now you're taking from the right side. Okay, and I'll lay that side on its back. And we'll do this one with the blue. And the pattern calls for scarlet, blue, and yellow. So we start with the scarlet first is on the bottom. And go to blue and then the red. You dyed these yourself? Uh, no. A couple of them I have. Yeah. Okay, now what I'll try to do is get them as 
sort of even as possible, even in, in uh, width, eh? Yeah, okay. I'll just put my points of my scissors in and just okay. slip them out, yeah. yeah. Once you get it going, it'll tear evenly. Right? Yeah, sure. And yeah. this one here has got a bad, ragged edge on it. I don't like to cut the tips, but this one was really poor, right? Okay. Okay, now, facing me now are the concave sides. Mm -hmm. So, one. Oh, we gotta go scarlet, blue, and yellow. We gotta get, keep that right in your mind. <laughs> you get halfway up through the wing, you say, oh, I'm gonna put the round fibers in. And we just lay them edge to edge, stroke them up and down, just weave them a little bit, mm -hmm. wiggle them, and hump them, and that's together. Wow. There's nothing to it, you know, once you know how. It's like anything else. If you're shown how to do it, it's hard to, hard to pick this up out of books, you know. And the same for there, right? All right. Now that's not very hard, is it? Doesn't seem too bad, no. Oh, okay. There. Okay. Okay, now, the next thing. Now, this is goose, dyed goose. And this is off a land-based bird, and this is peacock wing. And it's not a very easy to obtain, but I, I was lucky that I had a good friend of mine who was near a farm up in uh, Ontario, or a zoo, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And he set me down the whack of it, you know? Uh -huh. And again, I, I took it off the right side of the feathers, right? Okay, gotcha. Because this is the right side of the right wing, or the right. far wing. And we'll leave yeah. it in there. And you want the same width in all four? You don't want to taper to well, look at slightly? wider as they go up or down or anything like that? Well, these are things that you, you can do yourself, you know, to, to uh, well, make the fly more intense or whatever, or just subdue it a little, you know? Sure. Like, uh, keep the colors narrow and keep your your natural strips, natural color strips, you can uh, make them a little larger, you know, or a little sure. wider. Yeah. Uh, on this reduced version, like, uh, what I do is I normally go with the, uh, the natural fiber, colored fibers, a little thicker than the colored fibers because it's replacing two or three natural fiber colored uh, feathers. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got that done. And what I'll do is I'll attach my thread. So this is a 6 ohm monocord red. Mm, yes, sir. Now what I've done is I put part, a portion of my underwing in, which is the golden pheasant tippets, and I collared a blue hackle and pull it down in mm -hmm. front of the wing, that part, portion of the wing. Mm -hmm. So I'll just bring my thread up. Tie it in, and then we've misplaced a, a feather. Here we are. Oh, it's underneath here. And John's right on the ball. Look, eagle eye. I have to do something to justify my existence to the show. Well, I'm glad you put it that way. Not enough just out fish every time we go out. You know, I have yeah. to do something else. Yeah, that's it. Well, rub it in, rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> now, what I'll do here is I'll lay the fibers together, and what I'll do is I'll put my fire wing in and just lay it so that it's barely touching the tip of the wing. So what kind of a length? Do you want it to, the edge of it, the end of it to reach the, 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 wing, the tag? The tail. The tail? Okay. And they should be equal in, in width mm -hmm. pretty well. I'll check that now. In length, that's good. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Now I'll just tie it off with a nice loop and pull up. One, two, Three, that four. way that it doesn't spin off to the side or That's anything. That's right. Here now you've go. made it stand right up. Yeah, look. Oh, gee whiz. Isn't that I wish, I wish they all uh, worked out as well as that. <laughs> Isn't that a beauty? Wicked. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm going to do undo two turns. Yeah. And I'm going to go one, two, three, just to secure it right in place. Now, okay. what I've done is when I tied that in, I moved ahead a little bit on my shank. And the reason for that was is I want to make a small head. Now, if you tied all those bunch of feathers, like the underwing and the different portions of the throat in the same spot, you'd have an awful big wing. So what we're doing, each time we tie in the material, we're yeah, moving we a little bit it. forward. Okay. Okay, we're gonna let that set just a second because uh, that cement is it, it's, it's well thinned, but it's that flexible cement and it's very sticky and we've gotta make sure that uh, it's a little bit dry before we put our other fibers in because if you get it on the, the fibers, you'll never get it out of there, right? Sure, yeah. Okay, now what I've got done here now is the same thing. Mm -hmm. The fibers on the right side of the feather. Get this out of the way here. 
are okay. going to be for the fire wing, mm -hmm. or the outside wing, and the fibers on the left side of the feather are going to be for the near wing. And what feather type is this? This is uh, teal. Now, okay. in the size of, uh, of the, the blue doctor, it called for teal and wood duck, and mm -hmm. I'm just going to use one, one, uh, one feather, so I omitted the wood duck. Although we did list it in the dressing, but we will we'll use the teal. Okay. Okay, we're just going to tear some fibers in on the far side. And what, what kind of proportions in comparison to what we just used? And again, that's up to you. We're, this is not a classic uh, exhibition fly or anything. This is a fishing fly. So about uh, a third of the wing is what they say in the two strips we're in. So again, that's up to yourself now. Okay. I'm going to tie the far side in. And I'll tell you, a rotational voice, a rotary voice is a real thing for tying. You'll last after this. Oh, last it ever. both sides without having to. Yep. <gasps> Remove it from your hook or get up right and walk there. around the table or anything. And tie it in with one turn. One. Now I'm going to check to see if that's right on the side. That's now, a little low. Now this time, you didn't tie both of them in at the same time like no. you did with the first one. No, because uh, you, ca you can't do it because it's uh, tied in separately. You would never be able to put them in the same position. Okay. So one, one loose loop to see if it's in place. <laughs> yep. And then if you're happy with it, then uh, tighten it up. Yep. I'll just let it go on the outside. I'm not too concerned about that. The color is going to show through when it's in the water anyway. Yeah. And the same thing for right here. Okay. I'll hump it. When you say hump it, what are you putting a bend just in Just a little it? bend in it. And when okay. you tie it in, right on that hump, it'll stay in position. Okay. Supposedly. <laughs> in an ideal world. Yeah, in an ideal world. There, that's good. A little lying on this one here, but again, I'm not too concerned about it. Okay. And again, we're laying some cement. And this is important. Uh, in the old English flies, or let's say the old classics, because a lot of the classics were made in Scotland and Ireland, in fact, and even Wales, they use a lot of liquid wax. Mm -hmm. And that's why you've seen some flies. Like I've, I had an uncle who has a fly in his kit that it's over. 50 years old, mm -hmm. and it's a call to pop them. And, it, and it's, uh, today's, in today's money, it'd be worth, you know, if you had to tie it right from scratch with one, two, three, four, five, six Indian crow feathers, you're looking at $60. Plus the other materials and time, you look at the time with $100. For one fly that I'm going to lose in the woods behind me. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> OK. OK, OK. Now, what I'm going to do here, John, is I'm going to make one two, three, four, five wraps on top of each other. Mm -hmm. And I am going to clip out the excess here. So you can see what you're doing. Yeah, because I'm going to. Because you're going to want that space now as you build up the head more. Oh, yes. OK, good. This is where a nice, sharp pair of scissors really comes into in handy. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. I'm just going to cover that, cover the butts just a little bit. Okay. I'll drop down a little bit right here, but that's okay. Okay, lovely. Now we're going to turn the fly over. Actually, I'm going to move my head a little bit more to the horizontal. And I'm going to lay in. Just let me just uh, help the boys out a little bit. There you go. OK, how's that? Yeah, much there? better. Good. Yeah. You're going around banging everything around, mine. No concern for the camera. Yes, please. that's true. I wasn't thinking why. <laughs> OK. Uh, the throat of, of uh, classic flies, which call for European J, mm -hmm. were often substituted with uh, guinea fowl dye blue. And I don't find guinea fowl dye blue a very close match for European J. Mm -hmm. Because it spots as opposed to bears, and European jay has bears. Sure. So what I'm using there is uh, grizzly dyed kingfisher blue. Okay. And it's as close a match as you can come to it. All right. What a beautiful color. Look, look. Okay. Okay. And what we'll do here is we're going to so talk. So when you dyed that, do you put the? Did you dye it? No. Oh yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's my own invention. Whoa! What a guy. Uh, don't forget it. OK, here we go. We're going to lay it up on the, underneath. Mm -hmm. 
and we're gonna do it so that it rotates just a little bit up around the sides. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, that looks good. Really nice, yeah. Oh, my God, it's working out so good. You're your, your own best audience. No, because I'll tell you why. Because uh, uh, sometimes putting these feathers in takes a lot of trial and error. You, know, you put it in once, sure. it doesn't work out. You put it in again, it doesn't work out. What can you do? Well, you just practice, keep going. Practice, practice, practice. Yep. And I'll clip that out, and I'm going to put some cement on it, John. Because I don't want that to be slipping out, you know? No. Rod is rattling away here. Yeah, there we are. Mm -hmm. What I'll do is I'll make one extra rep and turn the fly away from me. I'm gonna straighten it up a little bit now. So we got that portion of it. We got the wing, mm -hmm. the sides, and the throat in. Finish this fly up now. So what have we got left to do? Here? Okay, we just got the bronze mallard roof to go in. And again, that's for the outside wing, that was from the outside of the feather. Okay. We'll lay that on. Actually, what we'll do, we're gonna put these together. Oh my golly, Ooh. John, look, I dropped my feather, look. Yeah. Oh my gosh, by golly. Oh my gosh, by golly. It's time Bing Crosby, is it? Mistletoe in is Holly. it? Is it Big uh, Bing Crosby? I'm not sure who it is. It's a Christmas carol. Yeah, but uh, Write us in, tell us who did it. Yeah. We can do, we can com combine the show. <laughs> I don't think so. Now, my hands are awful sticky here now in this heat. Mm. I'm under pressure here now, boy. Under fire. I'll lay it right on top. Yeah. While Rob's laying this in, I would like to thank everybody who has written to the show and, of course, thank the great people at G. Loomis Fly Rods for sponsoring it for yeah. another year and, of course, putting up the G. Loomis GL3 nine-foot for a number nine line. My gosh. Got it. Not bad. The whole season, I finally got it down. So thanks again to the fine folks at G. Loomis Fly Rods for donating the rod again. This is the third one that we'll be giving away, and I hope that whoever uh, receives it, enjoys it, for both salmon, salmon and trout fishing, whatever your, yeah. your particular favor is. Okay, we got that in there. And now it's just to lay in. We're moving along pretty quick again here now, but mm -hmm. we, we demonstrated what we wanted to do this evening, and that was to show the married portions of the wings, right? Yeah. And now we do the... The old topping on, right? Yeah. The golden pheasant crest. Right over. Now, what, what kind of a distance do you want with this? Uh, right to the edge of the tail. Right to the edge of the tail. Okay. And we'll finish off our head. A little larger than I had hoped for, but it's not bad. Once you get cement on that, that will, uh, that will uh, shrink up a little, you know? Mm -hmm. Well thin cement and whatever. And there we are. The whip finish. Yep. Put it right there. And there we go. Lick her over a little bit, you know. There you Not go. Not like a bit of spit, but I get everything to lay right.